All right, we're all set up a few minutes late here for the for the Facebook Live today for this is episode number 10. Obviously, we're on location. You can see the location where we are out in the cave. Little change of plans, so we had to switch up the location. Quick sip of my herbal life before we get started. So we're out on location in the cave for this week's Facebook Live. Let's go quickly what we're going to go over today. Give you guys a chance to get settled in. Today I'm going to unveil the two most effective pieces of exercise equipment for weight loss. Really the three most, two of them are kind of combined together. So the two most effective pieces of exercise equipment for weight loss. Then we're going to go over the mindset secrets of a psychotic Marine. I don't know who that psychotic Marine could possibly be, but that's what we're going to go over. Then I'll be answering some of the top questions of the week. We have a case study, which is this week, Walter Camacho, and other questions and whatever else you have. If you have questions, you can put them right there in the comments as we're going. So you can send your questions, try to answer them as we go. So basically, we'll go over a quick recap what's coming up, what we have coming up. You know, we have the Game Changer program coming up, six-week challenge coming up. There is a difference. People ask all the time, what's the difference between the Game Changer program, six-week challenge? Okay, six-week challenge can be for non-members or for members. That six-weeks challenge contest, largest percentage of body weight loss. Also, the best body transformation in the six weeks. And those will be two winners for that. That's six weeks. That's actually a full boot camp boxing program. The Game Changer program is that eight-week program. That's an advanced accountability, nutrition, mindset, coaching program on top of your already existing boot camp boxing program. So you already have to be a member to be doing the Game Changer program. It's not a standalone program. You're not going to do it by itself. So just real quick on the six-week challenge, we'll go into, I'll just talk about it. Real quick, uh, Rock, it's Rockland County's famous six-week weight loss body transformation challenge officially starts Monday, May 8th. So this is the biggest, longest-running, freaking most successful, most real results weight loss challenge and weight loss program in Rockland County. Probably in New York State, probably in the fucking world. But we, we were voted America's top trainer and studio recently in California, and it's main, a big reason of that is because of this six-week program, this six-week challenge. That's a huge part of the reason why we did win that award. This challenge alone has helped hundreds and hundreds, probably even thousands without even us knowing it. People transformed their entire bodies and lifestyles and gave them hope again. This, the, you know, the majority of the people thought they would never see any results. Forget, forget about the mind, the, you know, the fucking mind blowing results that they get here at peak, even in just their first six weeks during the program. You know, leading, leading up to the six week challenge, which starts May 8th, like I said, that, that Saturday before it, we're gonna have an orientation seminar on how to eat for weight loss. And how to keep it off forever. Just gonna shift this a little bit. How to eat weight loss, how to keep it off forever. That's a seminar. There's gonna be two seminars that, that Saturday, one at eleven fifteen or eleven forty five and one at three fifteen PM. The Saturday before the challenge. That's Saturday, May sixth. Then uh, you know that that's gonna be a complete shift in your nutritional thinking, which we call here educational eating by practicing nutritional discipline. We'll guide you on how to have laser beam focus on your goals and why you Go over why you want this weight loss and why you fucking need this weight loss, really. You know, and then that Sunday before the challenge, which is May 7th, we're going to do a grocery store tour walkthrough teaching you how to shop, how to read the labels, how to shop for, do your grocery shopping for weight loss and how to, you know, how to probably get kicked out of a fucking grocery store because that's usually what happens when we go there. We get kicked out and they try to kick us out. So we're going to take you through aisle by aisle, you know, breaking down the truth, most of the bullshit and scams and, and you see in advertising on the foods and the commercials and in the grocery stores. And we're going to teach you exactly what to look for to ensure your massive fucking success and reach your goals. You know, I used, I used to ask the grocery store managers if it, was, if it was okay, like blah, fucking blah, you know, can, well, can we do it? Well, actually, I wouldn't ask them. The, the Russian would used to ask them. And sometimes they were being in like little whiny little bitches like they'd be like, oh, I don't know. I need to check with mommy and daddy over at corporate and all that corporate bullshit. Now, do I look like the corporate type to you? Do I look like the, the corporate compliance type? Fuck no. So now we don't ask them anymore. We just storm that motherfucker and we just go charging straight in there like it's the invasion. But I bring some killer content. We teach you exactly what you need to do to get make the changes in your, in your life and in your body and your eating to get the goals during this weight loss challenge. And, you know, at the end of the day, we may end up making that store thousands and thousands of dollars in purchases from, from our mob of people that go storming through that place. So they're not really going to be that too concerned, you know, from all of our people there. That, so now they just kind of step aside. They let me do my thing. They just get the hot out of the way. They stop calling the cops. They call the cops the first few times, but we're not worried about that anymore. That's when you're used to that, you know? Like, like listen, there was the, the quote, this, this week's quote, one of these this week's quote, uh, General George Patton, who was a senior officer during World War II. He said, either lead me, follow me, or get the fuck out of the way. Now, I'm not sure if he, he used the word fuck, if that was actually said. 
So I might be misquoting the general, but uh, you know, he was known as America's fighting his general. So I'm pretty sure he wouldn't mind me, you know, adding that into his quote of getting the fuck out of the way. It's either lead me, follow me, or get the fuck out of the way. You know, I learned a long time ago, it's better to ask for forgiveness later than to ask for permission now. Like, like the day in, in my cave many, many years ago, me and the Russian were in, a, were in a church, all dressed up with all those fancy freaking clothes, with the whole priest and all that stuff there, standing up there with you on like an altar, whatever the heck they do there, that whole little ceremony thing. You know, and right before the end, I decided to drop and do a set of freaking push-ups just because I felt like it. Right there on the stone altar in that cave. The priest almost shit his freaking pants. I guarantee if I asked him beforehand if I could drop and do a set of push-ups right at the height of his ceremony in the cave, right up on the stone altar, he would have said, fuck no. Or maybe he wouldn't have said, fuck no. He probably would have said no. Or maybe he would have said, fuck no. I don't know. So we're going to storm that grocery store. We're going to help you, you know, help you all in this six, it's going to help all you in this six-week challenge. Learn what you need to toss in the cart and what you need to go toss out into the fucking garbage. That's what we're going to teach you. Learn how to read the labels and what actually is being told, set, what actually you're looking at on the labels, what to look for, the key things you need to look for, the ingredients you need to look for, the numbers and percentages and the scams and something says 93% lean and all this other stuff, how to convert the grams into calories. We're going to cover all that stuff during that whole weekend with the orientation Saturday, the grocery store tour on Sunday. Tons of information, killer information we're going to go over. It's going to help you. It's going to change your life. So if you're sick, and, sick of going to the gym on your own, or wait, you're wasting your money, or more importantly, you're wasting your freaking time, digging yourself deeper and deeper into that hole, not getting any results. You know, if you never felt like you fit in in a regular gym and didn't feel comfortable, like you get along at the gym with all those freaks in, the, in a regular gym that just are wasting, you know, they're not even, they're not there for anything serious. You know what I'm talking about, those people in, those, in, the, in the regular gyms. The, the, the fucking mirror staring, gallon, gallon jug water drinking, picture of self taking, needle in the ass crack poking, self centered, eagle maniac, non result, result getting motherfucker with their hair slicked back. Bitches come in wearing their prom and all their fucking makeup and lipstick on a pig, fucking faking it until they make it. Those goat loving freaking douchebag pricks at the regular gyms, you know that you're surrounded by those kind of people, you know them, you know who I'm talking about? Then if you're, if you're sick of being around people like that and you're looking for a real training environment, a real culture and experience and, and results, then this six-week challenge is going to be for you. So here you'll fit in with the family, with, with a family of like-minded peak freaks over at, at Peak Physique. So you have, you have little, little to no time to get yourself in sh- if you th- This program is for you if you think you have little to no time to get yourself in shape or if you've had trouble sticking to a fitness routine or if you hate working out in a regular gym or going to the gym for hours and hours and hours without seeing any results or you lack the motivation to get in shape. Maybe you just don't know where to freaking start. That's who this program is for. That's the kind of people this program is for. Then this six week challenge is your answer. You know, you, if you want to learn how to drop weight fast and keep it off, if you've been put, putting it off, you know, the weight loss and getting healthier and living a healthy lifestyle, you've been putting it off for the longest time, this is now your opportunity, this six week challenge. Uh, if, you're, if you've been putting off looking and feeling the way that you deserve, the way that you want to look and feel, you know, if you have a busy schedule, we have like nine to 10 classes a day, most days during the week, there's classes on Saturday, there's early morning classes, there's middle of the day classes, there's evening classes all over time. If you have inches to lose and belly fat to lose, if you want to get in the best shape of your life, this six week challenge is for you. If you want more energy, more strength, more freaking confidence. Confidence is, is, will lead you into anything you want in life. Just having confidence in what you're doing and the mindset. We're going to get into that deep in a second. Some deep stuff there in a second on the mindset and the confidence. If you want to look better in the mirror or in photos or even better, if you want to look better butt-ass fucking naked, you know, if you want to look better in those, get fit into those old jeans you used to wear back in high school or whatever, I guarantee you we can make that happen for you again. If you're committed to getting results and committed to making yourself a priority again for this freaking summer that's coming up, it's coming. There might be some shitty weather out there right now. But the summer is coming. Summer of 2017 is coming. If you are ready to make yourself a priority again for this summer and make shit happen again, this program is for you. So who is this not a good fit for this, this six-week challenge? And just overall, this is not just a six-week challenge. This is overall our program. The six-week challenge just gives you a chance to get into the gym and get, you know, get, get started. That's just, a, that's just a breakthrough, the six-week challenge. That's just like scratching the surface. But anyway, the, the gym in general. Who is this six-week challenge or gym not a good fit for? Anyone who thinks that hours and hours of cardio on a, on a treadmill like a fucking hamster on a wheel or those stupid machines, those skiing machines, whatever the fuck it's called, is, is the best way to lose weight. Or anyone who thinks that lifting weights or doing strength training or you know, body weight exercise or resistance training, anyone who thinks 
especially women who think that's going to make you big and bulky, then this is not a program for you because your mind isn't where it needs to be at. Or anyone who likes counting calories. And, and if you think you need to measure your food, you don't need to do that. I'm going to show you exactly how you could eat as much as you want to. Never have to count your calories. Never have to measure your food. And it's all going to fall into place and you're going to get in the best shape of your life. If, if, you th if anyone who thinks that the latest magic pill or latest bullshit little fad on, on, on an infomercial at 3 in the morning when you're sitting there all depressed is going gonna, is gonna to make you lose weight or something, this program is not for you because there's no magic pill. Anyone who wants results but not, does not want to put in the fucking hard work and effort, this program is not for you. Or this program is also probably not for those douchebags I was just describing about in the gym drinking their bottle, sticking the needle in their ass. I mean, we'll try to help you out. Don't get me wrong. We will try to help you out. You know, but, but some people don't want the help or are not willing to change. But we'll still take you in and treat you like freaking family and see if we could change your lives. Because that, that's exactly what we stand for. So we'd be hypocrites if we didn't accept you in there with your freaking jug of water in your hand. We're going to help you change your ways. We're going to insist you change your ways and make sure you change your ways and your mindset to get the results. And if it's not a good fit, then we'll ask you kindly to just, you know, get the fuck out. Because that's what this program does. It changes lives. And this six-week challenge is just a kickstart. What do we got here? You are in charge of accomplishing your own goals, only you. Yes, yes. She's a, a stud superstar, Christine, of the, the Game Changer program. Completely changed her life. What are the comments we got there before I keep babbling on? If you're not getting results, it's your own fault. We're going to go deep into that. You guys are already, those are some of our members already. They already know a lot of this mindset stuff. We're going to go deep into it on a different level that you never even knew about or never even thought about. We're going to talk about some crazy shit. So for this six-week challenge, Members, you know we have this points challenge coming up. Don't forget about the point sharing challenge. There are thousands of dollars literally out there in cash and prizes available for you to win before the six-week challenge ever even starts. And right after this broadcast, I'm going to repost that into the VIP group. And I'm actually going to do a Facebook Live describing that entire thing. Who's calling me? I'm going to do a, a separate Facebook Live in the VIP group right when this is over. Just really quickly recapping and telling you about how that points challenge works because some people are saying oh the list was so long the, the instructions were so long on it well then you don't want to win a fucking tv and you don't want to win thousands of dollars in cash and this is before the challenge even starts then when the challenge starts there's another thousands and thousands of dollars of prizes in this six-week challenge including six months free of freaking boot camp and boxing which tina actually won last time so she's coming to this this she's coming to the greatest fucking gym in the country for free for winning that six-week challenge talk about a win-win situation hold on i need a freaking drink I'm fired up today. I'm fired up because we're talking about mindset and that shit gets you going. It's, it's all about being positive in a mindset because I'm just a positive motherfucker, right? So I'm going to go live in the Facebook VIP group, the, the private VIP group, talk about the points sound later. We'll get to that later. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time on it now. So now we're going to get to the two most effective pieces of equipment for weight loss. And this goes for anyone. So I'm often asked all the time, all the equipment, that I'll, be, I'll be asked all the time, you have all the equipment in the world. If you get to pick your one dream piece of equipment or out of all this stuff out there, the fancy expensive shit, Margo. What's up, Margo? Always fired up. Fuck yeah. I don't know if I'm never not fired up. This is what the whole mindset's going to be about. We're going to get into that in a second. Why, why I'm always like this. It's not because I'm on fucking crack or something. If some of you think that. Never did drug, any drug in my life. Never even smoked weed in my life. Not even one time. Never. I may have had an adult beverage here and there, but that's about it. So I don't need that shit. Imagine me on fucking drugs or cocaine or some shit. I don't know what the fuck would happen. Maybe I'd be normal then. I don't know. Anyway, I'm often asked all the time, what's the best piece of equipment? If you could pick, they asked me, if you could pick one piece of equipment to, to train all your clients with for the rest of your life, or one piece of equipment that you can only use yourself for the rest of your life, what would it be? Or maybe even one piece of equipment. You had a client, you had to lose 100 pounds. You had to get them to lose 100 pounds in whatever, in a certain amount of time. What's the one piece of equipment you would use to get for them? And the answer, really, it could be, what, what do you think it would be? Who, who thinks they know the answer? The one piece of equipment I would choose. Let me see some ideas down here in the comments. What are some, what's the one piece of equipment you think I would choose to get people in shape? Someone's calling from Florida. Anyway, put in the comments what you think the one piece of equipment is. Is it a, a treadmill? Because you could go on there and walk and burn fat and calories all day and this and that and burn all kinds of stuff, right? You could do uphill walking. You could run. You could sprint. You could go backwards. You could do fucking cartwheels on there. Your body and cardio, your body. See, you people know how the fuck we do things here. So we're going to continue. Maybe it's a leg press machine, a big, you know, a big fancy 4,000 piece of clunk of fucking metal. What a waste of space and money on your fucking knees and your, your spinal health. You see those guys in the gym on the leg press machine. I'm just going to babble while you guys put some stuff 
put some uh, questions in there. You're all on the right track, obviously. Uh, punching bag. You want to beat the shit out of someone. <laughs> Your own body. Obviously, the body is body is the se- is part of the first answer, but that's the second part of the first answer. The body, you guys are close, but it's still not the not the top top answer. It's like a two part answer. There's two two answers. Two two answers. I'm gonna give the first one. Body is a, is a part of that, but that is not the main part. So back to that leg press machine. Since I was on that, I just started thinking about it. You see those guys in the gym and some girls too, filling the entire fucking bar with like 17 and a half plates on each side, doing like nine reps of like three quarters of an inch rep. Their knee is moving like a half an inch, like they're humping a fucking rabbit or something. And they get off they're like, yeah, they post on, on Instagram and they're just taking a picture of themselves with hashtag team get swole, motherfucker. I, I did 1,055 pounds on a leg press machine. You did not do a thousand and nothing on nothing. I guarantee you, you probably couldn't do a full range of motion by a body weight squat or a squat with an empty barbell on your freaking back. You know, motherfucker, first of all, you twitched there for a couple seconds. Looked like I was ready. I was ready to call 911 just for you sitting there. You're probably doing more harm than good. You, you, you need to just start doing a little more effective stuff than worrying about how many plates you're throwing on there so you can post it on freaking Instagram or all this other, other bullshit. Whatever that thing is, those people put those silly little cartoons around their face. Who's this talking? How am I talking to myself? I don't even know how I'm talking about. I'm typing to myself, apparently. So my top choice of equipment, um, you know, it would maybe it's something something like a, a barbell, a single, you know, a barbell is pretty good, decent piece of equipment, or something fancy, portable, and versatile like a TRX, another awesome piece of equipment. But they're useful, but they're not my top choice. So like I said, the first answer is a two-part answer with you guys are right on the same track and someone just said it. I actually put it in the, ca- the, the title of this whole thing. The first answer, very simple. The number one piece of equipment I would choose would be my mind. Some of you said it. You said mind and body. And mind and body, they're going together. But even mind, before you even talk about the body, because your body doesn't have shit without your mind. So when it comes down to, when it, comes down to it, that's all you fucking need. Now, obviously, you might need some coaching and guidance and leadership and, you know, taught some things to go in the right direction like we do and when we're teaching you what we're doing. But if you get your mindset right, your body alone is your number one tool with your mind controlling it. Fucking mind osmosis, some shit. Mind alone is controlling it. That is the number one tool, the only tool you need to get in shape. You don't need any equipment if, you, if that's what the case. You know, my body weight only sessions that I do, I plan at least a minimum of one Body weight only, and we're talking for strength and for cardio. Both. I do a strength cardio, a strength body weight, and a cardio full hour, hour and a half session every week. I make sure I do it body weight only for both strength and cardio. Those are some of my greatest, most high intent, you know, high intensity, challenging, muscle fucking blasting, heart rate pounding training sessions. I do. I love them. That's when that's when you get freaking pumped up. That's when you get real strength, controlling, maneuvering your own body. So so back to the mindset for a second. This is actually an example. What you know, all this stuff we're going into is what we work on in the upcoming Game Changer program, which starts this Saturday. Our first meeting is this Saturday, 11:45. The brain is the most complex and strong part of the body. The amount of work and control and direction it gives. If you've noticed here, we talk about it a lot in the gym and on these on these Facebook lives. Is a lot of working on your mindset. That's what we always go into because that's where it all starts. Is in your fucking head. It's all in your head. As I believe that's that, that's the biggest factor holding most people back in getting healthier and reaching their goals and changing their lives. I've done tons of reading and research and studying. I travel all over the country, all over the world, just to learn from everyone I come across. And it all always comes down to your fucking mind. That is always to hold you back in everything, in, in losing weight, in getting your body right and you're strong. Hell no, you can't hug me. Are you kidding? <sighs> anyway, there's a study with, with the Navy SEALs. I mean, and they weren't Marines or anything. They're only just Navy SEALs, but you know, they were fairly talented and intensely trained individuals. You know, if it was Marines, I'm sure this study would have been a lot crazier. It would probably have been a lot of more killing and drinking and, 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 and women or something in it. But we're going to talk about this study with the Navy SEALs for a second. They had them go through this intense, live fire fucking obstacle course, running and jumping and crawling and shooting, moving live targets with live ammunition. And they were scored based on their time and their accuracy, right? Then they put them in a huge fucking tub of ice until their body temperatures hit at a dangerously low level, like a normal person would be near death. So the problem was the problem they had getting with these Navy SEALs is was getting their body temperature to hit low enough level that they were trying to uh, uh, establish to get you know, the numbers level across the board. They had a certain number they had to hit in the body temperature to make the data all equal across the board. They were actually having to, you know, they were actually start focusing, almost meditating and actually increase their own body temperature just by using their fucking mind when they're in this tub of ice. 
They had to add ridiculous amounts of ice in almost a torturous amount of time. It took them like hours and hours of throwing them in there before their mind could stop making their body temperature rise. These fuckers were making their body temperature in a tub of ice, forcing their body temperature to rise up just using their mind. It's fucking crazy. So they had to put a ridiculous amount of ice. They tor tortured them for hours just to get their body temperature to get down to that level for the, for the study data to be consistent, right? So these motherfuckers hopped out with icicles hanging out of their fucking nose hairs and they just completely destroyed their previous scores on the live fire course. Now this shows the power of the fucking mind. That's mind blowing on two levels. They were in the, in the ice and their mind was making their body temperature increase instead of freeze. Then they jumped out and they know what it's going to take. They know what they, how they, much more they need to focus. Their mind just took over. They got through the course faster and were more accurate shooting their guns at all this live fire on this obstacle course. And that's all because of the mind. Now another study, this one, another study, even known, you know, this is even known as a medical condition now, which is, is probably even more fucking crazy than the Navy SEALs. Is, it's crazy, I'm not a doctor, but sometimes whatever. I read up on all kinds of stuff. I try to learn things from everyone. Is false pregnancy. This is crazy. I never even knew about this. It sounds like it's fake, but there's an actual medical term for it. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm just a trainer. You know, I lift up fucking weights and I yell at people and I say fuck a lot. So I don't even know the name of the, there's pseudo something it's called for a false pregnancy. Someone look it up and tell me what the, what the term is. Hey, some of them want to use a nurse in there, aren't you? Tell me what, what is the word for a false pregnancy. There's a, it's pseudo something. I forget the name. There's an actual medical term for it, you know, but I'm just a trainer in a gym that yells and wears pictures of dogs on his shirt and wears two different fucking sneakers and has camouflage hanging all over the place. So whatever. So for this, this, this is crazy, but it's where women and even sometimes men start showing real symptoms of pregnancy when they're not pregnant. It's crazy for various reasons. Usually there's probably some adversity or trauma or whatever, or whatever, something causes it or they want it to be pregnant so bad. What are you I'm trying to read your comments while I'm babbling? Anyway, their minds trick their body into thinking that they're pregnant. It's fucking crazy how powerful your mind is. They can have many, if not all the symptoms of being pregnant up to and including even freaking lactating in some cases for weeks or an entire nine months. See, pseudo, no, pseudo pregnancy. There's another more, yeah, pseudo, 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 pseudoidiosis thing that you're saying. Exactly. See? So for these higher nine months, sometimes it even lasts for years. The mind is so strong and they might want it so bad or they were maybe through so much trauma or something or for some reason or they believe it so bad that they are going to be that their body starts producing some signs of being pregnant. You know, their, their belly starts swelling, their, their things maybe start getting bigger. They, they even start thinking they feel some, you know, fetus moving or movement in their stomach. So now their brain misinterprets all these signals that, that's just in their fucking mind and it triggers, actually triggers release of hormones because their brain releases it. There's estrogen and prolactin that's released and this leads to actual pregnancy symptoms like freaking lactating just off of their mind, just from thinking it. They think themselves pregnant. Obviously there's not, nothing there, but they think it. So your thoughts are not just your thoughts. Your thoughts are fucking reality. If you think you're fat or if you th or, and you're really fit and your, your perception becomes reality. So then in your mind... You're, if you're fat in your mind, then guess what? You're, you're fucking fat because your perception is a reality. That's what you're going to live as, as, as thinking that's what you are. Now, you know, I'm not some fucking philosopher or something, but Shakespeare, yes, I am about to fucking quote Shakespeare. Shakespeare, he said, there is nothing bad nor good, but thinking makes it so. Basically, something like bad or good, your mind tells you it's bad or good. You know, you, can, you, you, you decide what you're thinking and what you're feeling and if something's bad or something good or what, how you're going to process. You're responsible for your own thoughts. Your mind is responsible for everything. So if you think something's hard or unattainable or bad or fucking impossible, then guess what? It is. It's going to be impossible. It's going to be unattainable. You're going to stay out of shape. You're not going to lose fucking weight. It's just the way it's going to be because you're already telling yourself. You've already defeated yourself ahead of time. Hold on, I need another sip. I'm losing my energy. I'm, I'm slowing down a little bit. I need another sip of my Herbalife. Thank God I don't do cocaine, right? Like I was saying earlier. Fuck. So back to that fancy death trap I was talking about earlier of the uh, leg press, right? So years ago in the infancy of my training career, like 16, 17 years ago when I was like 9 or 10 years old because that's how old I am, 
You know, I used to have clients, I have to admit it, I would let them, I would have them use a uh, leg press all the time. That was like the thing. That's what we were taught was good back then. Then we realized it's fucking stupid and it was killing them and they were getting no results. They were just fat people laying down on a machine, putting tons of plates on it, killing their spine, not getting any results. So anyway, I was training this 53-year-old woman on a leg press machine one time, right? So I put this big 45-pound plate on each end of her leg press machine. 45 plate, you know, the big plates. Not those ones that those, those guys use, those uh, CrossFitters use. You see them use those big plates and they're throwing it around and it's really like two and a half fucking pounds. It looks like 45 pounds. No, these are legit, legitimate iron, you know, 45 pound plates on each side. She's like, no way. That's too heavy. I can't lift those heavy weights. I'm a 53 year old woman. This is woman. This is way too heavy for me. I'm going to hurt myself. But being the convincing trainer I am, I convinced her, you know, you, you try it out. Let's just see what happens. I convinced her to try it. And she was right. She tried it. I was wrong. I have to admit it. I was wrong for once in my life. She couldn't do it. She couldn't do one single rep with that 45 pound plate on each side. What a dumbass fucking trainer I was like 20 something years old. Didn't know what I was doing. I was going to hurt this 53 year old lady, right? So me being the reasonable asshole that I am, I took the 45 pound plates off of each side because they were obviously too big and too heavy for her. So what did I do? I put a 25 pound plate and two 10 pound plates on each side of the bar for her. Guess what this lady did? She banged out a set of fucking 15 reps like it was nothing, like she could have done it in her sleep. It was the same fucking 45 pounds. Her perception became reality. She saw these big plates, thought, no way I could do that. That's too much. I took it off, put smaller plates on, the same amount of weight. She's fucking banging it out, popping out. Obviously, I mean, fucking up her spine because she shouldn't have been doing it because the leg press, we don't use it nowadays anyway, or at least we don't. So that just, that just shows the point. It, it's all in your head. Your perception is reality. What, what you make yourself think, that is the truth. That is real. Like, you ever, meet, you ever meet someone and someone had told you something about that person already? Someone maybe told you that that person's a, a thief, right? That person's a criminal or something. Now, every time you look at this person, that's what you're going to perceive them as. Just because that's what the reality is to you. You don't know anything else. That's just, your mind will just make it real in the world. You know what I mean? Like, think of uh, people, someone was posting the other day about blushing. Why do I blush all the time? And what, is it, what does it mean? How do I stop blushing? I always blush. Maybe she's in there watching. She said, how do I, how do I stop blushing? Or, you know, and I told her when I start blushing, it usually means I'm ready to snap someone's fucking neck. But that's besides the point. That's a whole different uh, story. But, or when your heart rate goes up, you get excited or nervous or whatever. You might be sitting still and you can start thinking about something and your face could turn bright red. Or you can start thinking about something and your fucking heart could start pounding. So think about that. Just from your mind, what you could do, you could raise your heart rate. You could triple your fucking heart rate just from what you're thinking. You could make, you know, it's all powered by your mind. Physical change is happening from your nervous thoughts or or stress is all in your mind. People literally give themselves strokes and fucking heart attacks just off the pressure of their thoughts alone. You know, nothing is ever harder than you think it is. You ever get stre- so stressed out about something you have to do, you spend all day or all fucking week stressing it in, in anxiety through the roof and then, and then the time comes and you breeze through that shit like it was nothing? You're like, oh shit, that wasn't even that bad. You always think everything is harder than it is. Just, just think it's easy and it will be fucking easy. Stop giving a fuck so much and stop stressing as much and building up so much tension and anxiety in you that is only pushing you farther away from your goal than your weight loss or whatever else we're talking about. This could apply to anything in, in freaking life. It's not about, you know, helping. It's not, a, it's not helping shit to do that. It's just slowing down your progress and preventing you from the, the greatness where you need to be and where you want to be and you fucking deserve to be. Like, when I'm sitting in a nutritional consultation and someone says to me, oh, I show them all the changes they need to make, the foods they should eat, the foods they shouldn't eat, and how they need to break it down through the day, the foods they need to eliminate that they're eating right now. And I'm sitting there and someone says, wow, to make those changes in my diet, oh, that's going to be so hard. You know, you know, poor me. I won't be able to eat all that crap. I won't be able to eat all the crap I've been eating for this past, you know, fucking decade. It's going to be such a struggle. Poor me. I don't know if it's possible. Well, you know what? It is fucking possible for anyone. That shit isn't hard. If you don't think it's hard, it's not hard. It, it's, it's fucking easy. It was easy to shove those cupcakes in your face. Then it's going to be easy to not shove those cupcakes in your face. Just the same. What's the difference? It's all in your head. Hard as a fucking Marine stepping on a landmine in some foreign country that goes fucking kaboom. That's fucking hard. Turning down a piece of fat fucking cake at Aunt Susie's birthday party because you don't want to offend her. That shit isn't hard. That shit is easy. If you think it's easy, it is easy. You really just need to train your mind that really there are no losses in life. There are just learning experiences. What do you got going? What do you got going? Take it from me. Of course, it's possible. All the peak freaks know it's impossible. We're just spreading the word. 
to the civilians out there. So, you know, you really need to train your mind. There's no loss in life. Anything that happens you think is a loss or you failed at, that is not a loss. That is a greater fucking victory. Think of a boxer, goes in the ring, fights his opponent, knocks that fucker out in like 10 seconds. He won the fight, but he got nothing out of that. If he goes into another fight, last five or six rounds, he does bad, maybe eighth round, he might get knocked out even. But he sees 15 different things that he did wrong that he can improve himself and change on. That loss was 10 times more powerful and beneficial and positive than a two-second win just knocking some bum out. You're gonna learn, if you learn from your losses and your experiences, those are greater victories than the victories themselves. That's how you get stronger, and that's how you build up a fucking unbreakable mindset. So speaking of my, you know, mindsets, what do we got? Let me exist only in mind. Of course, all my peak freaks know this, and this is the stuff that we go on the Game Changer program. That's why uh, Christine there is, is, a, is a nut job, because we go over this stuff. This is just we're kind of expanding on it. Uh, so what about my, my mindset? My fucking mindset, obviously, as you haven't noticed, if you're you know, not very you know, observant, is pretty fucking whacked out. My mindset is to step down on the fucking gas pedal and steamroll forward until I hit my fucking goal or desired outcome. To fucking dominate at everything I do. No matter what the odds are against me, no matter what or fucking who is trying to hold me back or tell me I can't do it or tell me I shouldn't do it or tell me it's not possible, I don't give a fuck. When I pull the lever at the slot machines in Atlantic City, I expect to win the grand fucking jackpot every single pull. When I pull that fucking thing, I expect to win it every single fucking time. And when I don't, I'm shocked. I'm like, how the fuck did I not win that jackpot? The power of, the power of thinking, it's easy, and the, and the fucking positive power of thinking, that's, that's something that nothing or no one can ever take away from you, no matter how hard they try. Shit goes wrong in the situation for you? Fuck it. Learn from it and use it as a strength for the next time. Dominate your sector. It, it, it's your life. It's your space. It's all controlled in your fucking head. You know, now, now, this, now this doesn't mean you shouldn't have a backup plan for when things go wrong or when you don't pull the fucking slot and hit the jackpot. You still need to have a backup plan or a million fucking backup plans. I still strategize and organize and plan and adapt and overcome before, during, and after the, every fucking battle and on the way down. Like they say, you jump out of the fucking plane, build a parachute on the way down. But I'll still be planning, adapting, overcoming, strategizing. What, what is the next move? Where are we going to go next? What needs to get done next to get to the outcome that I'm looking for? If you're ready for anything and don't sweat the small shit in life, nothing will ever affect you. Nothing will ever derail your positive forward fucking momentum. You will become an unstoppable fucking freight train on a clear path to whatever it is that you're after. And nothing will deny you. Plan for the fucking worst, but expect the best. Or, if all else fails, just fucking kill them all. Anyway, so that was a simple, yet long-winded answer of my first most effective piece of equipment to lose 100 pounds or to train clients. That is the mind and the body, or the mind controlling the body. You know, I always say, you could do a high-intensity, full-body workout in 20 minutes in an empty fucking elevator if you needed to, and... It's just up to allowing your mind to want it, to motivate you, and to remind you of why you're doing it, and to push your body and just make shit happen. So to be fair, because I'm a reasonable and fair motherfucker, I'll also give you the second piece of actual exercise equipment that I would choose. Are you ready for it? It's a very complex, fancy, advanced piece of equipment. I, I thought I had one around here, but I had to move locations, so I don't even have it here. I was going to actually show it to you. It's, you know, all the stuff out there, all the expensive equipment out there. If I had to pick one piece of equipment to use even for myself to stay in shape or for to help someone lose 100 pounds, one piece of equipment other than the mind and body, an actual physical piece of exercise equipment, it would be, who knows it? Who knows the actual piece of exercise equipment? Who could tell me? Bad pass the mind and body before I, before I say it. Someone put it in there. You guys picked the mind up and body pretty quick. Can you get this one? And I want specifics too. Someone, someone, someone put a fucking answer in there. No one's got the answer. No one knows the one piece of equipment. Anyway, I'm going to say it in three. If no one knows it, someone can say it before I say it. Count this down. You got a free t-shirt. Two, Monster Band Close. That's probably third. Close. Two seconds. I'd pick that second or third would be the Monster Band just because it's so light and portable. Everyone says bands. I know you're going to say the B word, motherfucker. Anyway, it is a one pair of 20-pound dumbbells. That is it. Oh, too late. You could add a t-shirt. You'll still get a t-shirt anyway. Sea bone kettlebell. So that's what I would say. For me, personally, eating right next size, 
Will eating right next size stop diabetes? Maybe not stop it. I don't know if it's stoppable, but it will certainly control it. Dumbbells, yes. A one, uh, for me, it's a pair of 20 pound dumbbells or even one single 20 pound dumbbell. Second to that, T-Rex is up there because it's versatile, it's lightweight. But if you see like those workouts I do, I do from the cave that we do live, like we just did one on Sunday, all it was was a pair of dumbbells and bands and a kettlebell and a stability ball. Dirt cheap stuff. Portable, light, small, except the dumbbells, obviously. But think about a pair of dumbbells. You could mix all that body weight stuff you're doing in with a pair of dumbbells. 20 pounds, that's all I need. I could get away with doing 20 pound dumbbells for the rest of my life. I don't need some 100 pound macho fucking dumbbells to, to, to work out the rest of my life or to get someone to lose weight. I could do every, you saw the cardio exercise we were doing. We were holding a kettlebell. Those jack presses we were doing. If you do a set of 25 push ups and then grab those, and, and a set of 10 dips or something, and grab those 20, 20 pound dumbbells and do a set of 30 alternating dumbbells on your back with your feet in the air while you're flutter kicking, you're gonna get fucking strong, you're gonna get fit, you're gonna get toned, you're gonna get pumped the fuck up, you're gonna get in shape. There's unlimited amount of stuff you can do with dumbbells. Every cardio exercise you can do with dumbbells. Squat thrusts, jump squats, crawl outs, sit outs, everything. You can do shoulder presses, you can do biceps, you can do triceps, you can do chest, you can do push up walks, you can do every single thing. Jack presses up, jack presses out, front to back, jack press up, front to back, jack press out. Lateral shuffles, everything. Sp- you could do unlimited amount of stuff you could do. You could hold one dumbbell with two hands. You have to. You could do the pair. Now, when you're talking about those exercises, you could do double arm. You could do palms out, palms in. You could do alternate. You could do single arm. You could do single arm, single leg. Unlimited amount of shit you could do with a pair of dumbbells. And they don't have to be crazy heavy dumbbells because you also want to use them for cardio and for your strength and for your core. So if you go too heavy, which would be ideal for strength, or too light, which would be ideal for cardio, it's not going to work for the other. So that's why 20 pounds is perfect because if that's too heavy for someone, they could just take one 20 pound dumbbell. That's all you fucking need if you really had to. Obviously, you wanna have different varieties so you don't get bored, get better workouts, like all the crazy shit we do in the gym. So anyway, we're gonna go into this week's case study, which is Walter Camacho. Now this is a fucking awesome story and a real life example of you know, displaying the mindset that I'm talking about this entire time. It's crazy, how it just fits right into exactly what I'm talking about. He's one of the, the twins that work out in the gym. I have no clue which one he fucking is. We have before, his before and after picture. After the case studies, I always say I'm going to post the before and after picture. Sometimes I forget to. So if I ever forget, tell me. But I'm going to post both of these because I don't know who the fuck is who. They look exactly the same. So Walter Camacho is one of them. I'm going to post them both and they could tell me which one is which if they even know. I don't even know if they know the difference between, the, between themselves. Anyway, he started his fitness journey because two reasons, really. The first reason basically follows the second reason. But the main reason was because of his asthma. His asthma was so terrible I'm talking about spending weeks in the hospital hooked up to machines for hours overnight with his parents sitting behind him, him, you know, them watching him, him turn black and blue from gasping for every breath. It was a struggle every day to even play outside and, and all he ever wanted to do was a capability to keep up with the other kids and play with the other kids and not be restricted by his fucking asthma. That was his goal in life as a kid. Camacho twins. Yes, they're great. But one day, his gym teacher, who was also a football coach, asked him, have you ever thought about playing football? He told him no because of his asthma. But the, but the coach, and this, whatever, how long ago this was, you know, there's some good, good coaches out there obviously convinced him to give it a try and that it would probably even help out his asthma and make his asthma a little better. So he then went to the doctor with his dad, back to the doctor. We, we talked about some stories about some doctors that were some real fucking dipshits out there. One second. Like that doctor when I came out of the Marines that told me I was obese because I was over the height and weight standards. I was doing police tests to become a police officer. They told me I was obese over the height and weight standards to become a police officer. I had to do sonograms on my heart and all kinds of bullshit. That little chubby ass doctor was sitting there in the chair telling me I, I was overweight because whatever. Anyway, so back to him. He went to, this might have been the same doctor that, that Walter went to. The same one I had when I was trying to go to the police. He went to the doctor. They checked his breathing and his health and they sat him down. They told him, listen, Walter. You will never be able to play sports. You'll never be able to run out around with your friends. You will never be able to do any normal physical activity. Your asthma is that bad. You have no chance to do it. You're just going to have to deal with it. Figure out a fucking life without it. And so, obviously, they just crushed this kid. What a dumbass. What a fucking dumbass that doctor must have been. I hope he went back there and, and bitch slapped him or something nowadays. Anyway, don't do that. Or do it, but don't say I said to do it. Anyway, after that visit, as soon as he got home, you know, as soon as he got in the car... He sat there in silence for like five minutes and said nothing until his, his, his dad finally broke the silence and wrapped his arm around his shoulder and he told him, son, you know, we will work on this and you can do it. 
And he laid in his dad's lap and cried for like at least an hour straight, just laying there on his dad's lap. He, he said he will never forget that moment when he just sat there in his room then and he gave himself two choices. He said, you can either sit here and cry and be a little fucking bitch or I can get up and I could do something and prove this dipshit doctor wrong. And that's exactly what he fucking did. He got himself up. He prepped himself, you know, for the football season, trained himself, got in shape, started eating a little healthier. And that's when he got into fitness. That was, you know, way back then. So years later, he can say he proved this doctor freaking wrong. And he was fortunate to play all the way through college and never look back. Now, every time he starts to have like even a hint of, of, of self-doubt in himself, he thinks back to that doctor sitting there and sitting him down telling him, Walter, you can't do this. And you know what? Fuck that. He can and he obviously can. And he obviously did. So that's the first part. So now, why did he start now as an adult at Peak Physique at this fitness program? Because he went back to feeling bad for himself and, and not performing at the level that he knew he could. He was going through hard times, feeling sorry for himself, started breathing heavy again, started gaining a shitload of weight. You know, just walking up the stairs, he'd get out of breath. He knew he had to make a life change. You know, as his, he felt history repeating itself. He felt himself going, heading back down that dark path, even as an adult. The same path as a kid. That shit was just haunting him and coming back. He knew he needed to be pushed and he needed to bring that fucking fire back. And I'm not sure if you could see anyone around here that might be able to help, you know, motivate someone to bring that fire back. But I hope that we've helped him out. So his brother looked up for a place and he found Peak Physique and he signed up and he has not looked back. And he lost like, I don't know, a, a shitload of weight. I don't even know how much weight. It, we just did a video with him. We got to look on the video. 50 pounds. I think they each lost like 40, 50 pounds each, the two of them. So what, what causes weight gain as an adult was depression, not caring, giving up, just thinking that it was just over for him again, started feeling that same self-doubt that fucking dipshit doctor gave him years ago. You know, stress was the biggest reason. Stress was the big reason, but the biggest reason was he didn't have a why. Why did he want to get healthy? Why did he want to get in shape? So he's, you know, the fitness, all he did back then or started with doing was old football workouts that he did back in college, those you know, those bullshit workouts that you might be doing where you're training every day and you're playing every day so you can get away with it, but you can't be eating like a football player and training like a football player when you're not a football player. It's just not going to work. So the results he, ha- he has achieved, a lot would even think is, is, is fake and unimaginable. He's in the best shape of his life. He has built, he's built now on a whole different level, not just physically, but mental strength. And most importantly, the true definition of no excuses and, you know, d- don't ever say you can't because you can. That's his words. Because he's, he's a living example of it. He works, he comes and trains here every day, except, what's that, those charts? Yeah, the charts in the 60s. They told me I was obese, like over obese. I had to go to all kinds of heart doctors when I was going for the police. So he trains every day except for Friday and Saturday because they're over there selling cars. You know, and, and I asked him, if you saw someone, like even a kid or an adult going through some of the, in the same position as you, needed to lose weight, you know, having some problems, maybe the asthma or whatever their adversity might be, what would you, what would you tell that person that they're sitting here right with here with you? He said that if she had someone in the same position as him, he would tell them it's all about mental toughness. And that's exactly the fucking mindset stuff we were just talking about. To have patience with yourself and the results will come. Compete at the highest level with yourself day in and day out. Not anyone else. Fuck everyone else. Compete with yourself every day, day in and day out. Become a better version of yourself. My goal every day is just to be a better version of the fucking prick that I am every single day. And that's what I strive to do. You know, he said to be ready to be pushed. But no, you know, you have to, you have people to go through it with you together. And know that these amazing coaches here at Peak Physique will do everything and anything to help you reach your goals. And that they generally do care for you. And those are his words. He says, his favorite part of Peak Physique is that everyone at the gym is like, a, is like a fucking family. We all get along. We all push each other. We all strive for greatness and strive to be the best and go all out. We motivate each other and we all want the best for each other. We all joke around. We have a good time. We have fun. But we do what it needs, we need to do to get the work done, to get the job done. I like that it's a high intense level workouts and a whole lot of energy every single day. Then I asked him how his life has changed. Since he's had the weight loss and since he got back in shape over here at Peak Physique, he said it changed his, an entire new level for him. He's way more confident with himself. He has tons of more energy. If you can't tell, this program will give you fucking energy. This is me. This is me all fucking day. Speaking of that, let me get another sip because I'm sitting here freaking babbling. He said he has tons of energy. He's at a weight that he has not been at since high school when he was a kid, just started playing football fit teenager and now he's in better shape than that and at the same way he fits in clothes that he didn't fit in since fucking high school he has an addiction to fitness with all the results he's achieved and most importantly 
He said he feels happier and in a better place in life right now than ever in his life. And that's the biggest, that's the, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing that he finally realized after losing all this weight is that if you want something bad enough, you got to go out and get that shit. You got to grab that motherfucker by the neck and you got to control that shit. That's what you need to do. The effort you put in is the results you're going to receive out. Simple as that. And it all starts from your mind, from your mindset. Like I was saying earlier and like he's saying right here in his fucking story. You know, that anything else in life, especially in fitness, what, that you go, will go through a lot of pain, you know, that you know you'll get there, your success and the result is on the other end. The success and results on the other end. You just got to get through that pain sometimes, through, this, through, the, through it to get to the success and results. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's saying. So I don't know if there's any questions out there. I see some, some Russian or, or Lithuanian writing that I'm writing apparently. I don't know who the hell's writing that shit. I don't know if there's any questions there. But I had some questions that people sent in. Someone told me, uh, I was emailed this question, said, I've been coming to your bootcamp boxing classes for a few weeks now, and I absolutely freaking love them. I have already lost several pounds, but I just wanted to know why some days my muscles give out before I am even tired or out of breath. And there's an exact reason for that, and we plan for that to happen. We actually expect that to happen, and we design for that to happen, and we make that happen without you even knowing it. The reason Poland is watching, who's in Poland? Russia? Is, that, is Poland in Russia? Is that the same place? Is Poland a city in Russia? I'm not even sure. Anyway, the reason for that, this program is specifically designed for that to happen almost like 50% of the time. Our boot camps are classified technically as strength or cardio, and then there's boxing classes. So by strength, it doesn't mean you're doing some slow fucking meathead lifting. It's still peak physique, signature style boot camp that you can't find anywhere else on the fucking planet, you know, but with a foundation of strength. But there's still probably some elements of cardio. So a cardio workout then is obviously a cardio base with some elements of strength. If you're doing a strength-based workout, and your, your muscles should fatigue before you're breathing. If that's not the case, you're probably not using heavy enough weight, whether it's dumbbells or medicine balls or, or, or bands or kettlebells or whatever, you're probably not using enough weight or you're not going hard enough and not pushing yourself enough. So the, the goal is not to work, you know, the goal is now to work your actual muscles more than your breathing. So your muscles should get tired before you get out of breath or else you're not doing heavy enough weight probably. You know, this will help you build lean muscle, which will boost your freaking metabolism. Then you'll use that muscle to help you burn fat during the cardio sessions. So during the cardio sessions, your breathing should get fatigued before your muscles, since that's a primary focus. Obviously, that won't always be the case with some, you know, some structurally hard cardio fucking movements that we do, like some crazy shit that we do, you know, are, are maybe some things that aren't, you aren't the best at. They might, then you might, your muscles might go before your cardio, but generally that should be the case. On a, car, a strength day, your muscles should fatigue before you're breathing. On a cardio day, your breathing should fatigue before your muscles. That's how it's planned. That's how it's designed. What is this? I don't even know what this is. Harry up? Who's the, who the fuck is... What, why am I talking to myself? We have to go to a wellness fair. Harry up? Who the fuck is Harry, first of all? And then wait, weep, weep how? Weep how? God bless you. It sounds like... Are you sneezing on... on I don't know what that means. Anyway. Who's on a roll? Weepa, weepa. What the fuck is weepa? Anyway, it, our program is a completely synergistic program. We have we call it thirty three percent of each. You need thirty three percent strength, thirty three percent cardio, thirty three percent nutrition. It is synergistic. Your strength is going to build your lean muscle, which is going to boost your metabolism. Which then you're going to use that lean muscle to burn fat while you're doing your cardio. Then your nutrition is going to fuel the other two, which your nutrition, the way it's designed, is also going to boost your metabolism, and it's just a never-ending triangle, synergistic circle. So people say you need 80% diet. That's not the way we do it. We, do, we say 33% strength, 33% cardio, 33% nutrition. That's the way we do it. That's the way we base our nutrition is to help boost your metabolism, but also to fuel your strength and cardio sessions in just the right amounts to build muscle, boost metabolism, and kill motherfucking fat. That's what we do. Is there any other questions out there? Because apparently I have to go to a health fair, and I'm late. Huh? Any questions out there? All I see is like Russian writing and some other like Lithuanian or something. So that's what we have for today. Don't forget the, the Game Changer program. We just had three more people sign up for today. Maybe we could squeeze in one or two more people. If you want in on the Game Changer program, you need to let me know immediately before it, it obviously before the meeting is not the meeting is Saturday, 11 45. That is advanced level nutrition. The weight loss challenge, there's maybe Two more days that the 33% off will be available for non-members. The six-week weight loss challenge, there's over like $5,000 worth of prize in there, including six months free boot camp boxing classes. So you need to get on that. That 33% discount is gone. It's going to be increased. 
when once we once it sells out to the amount of people that I allow in at that rate, then it goes up to the full price for the rest of these two weeks. You still have about two weeks before that challenge starts. Starts May eighth, Saturday or Monday, May eighth. Don't forget that Saturday is orientation, the seminar on how to eat weight loss. That Sunday is the grocery store tour walkthrough. You have to be in the weight loss challenge to attend both of those. It's all part of the program. Nothing like it around. And I need to go to get to a health fair over at the high school. I got to be there in like a couple of minutes. So I got to fly out of the cave. And we're going to see you next time. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Call me, text me, send a fucking smoke signal. And I'll get back to you.